Um, good morning, everyone. Happy Tuesday. Uh, today we're going to be going over the April 1 enrollment report, um, all the details that you need to know about that report. Uh, once again, if you have any questions, please feel free to use the raise hand feature in the top right corner or the chat function, uh, which you can type in your message and let us know what your questions are. All right, I am Allie Cookson. I am the data quality trainer for the Maine Department of Education data team. Um, joining me today, we have Drew Mitchell as well as Gina Fournier um, from our help desk. So they are here as well. If we have any questions that we need to answer, we'll take it back to the team and we'll let you know after the webinar. Um, but we will answer as much as we can as we go. All right. So to get us started today, the help desk has many resources on the help desk page. Um, on the data reporting instructions tile, that is where you will find the instructions for the April 1 enrollment report. Uh, on the data reporting instructions page, that is a focus on NEO reports, so it's not going to go into Synergy. Uh, we'll get into where that data is coming from as we go, because it is coming up from Synergy for student data. So if you are looking for resources on how to complete this report or your superintendent needs some help with re completing this report, the data reporting instructions would be the place to go. Once again, um, once you're on the data reporting instructions page, the reports are mainly in alphabetical order. Um, April 1 enrollment instructions will be toward the top and it will have all the information that you need uh, to navigate to the report and information about what is included in the report as well, which we'll also be going over today. April 1 enrollment uh, it measures student counts and calculates tuition. So this is an uh, from the statute. The number of students shall be the average number of public secondary pupils enrolled on October 1st and April 1st of the same year. So uh, this is not used for EPS any longer. Um, it is used for calculating tuition rates and to inform program areas. Um, and so this is looking at students enrolled um, in your school as attending. So any students who are outside placements at regional programs or special purpose private schools will provide a general attending enrollment, but they will not count um, and in your tuition counts. Um, so as you get ready to do this reporting, this report opens on Monday. Uh, make sure that all of your data is up to date in Synergy and also then in NEO. Oh. All SAUs and private schools with publicly funded students um, should ensure that their data is up to date in Synergy um, and then also verify the reports in NEO. This includes charter schools and education in un unorganized territories. Some important dates to keep in mind. We are currently um, on the on Tuesday before this week. So uh, next week is April um, coming right up. So April 1st is Monday and that reporting the reporting period is going to be April 1, 2024. So this is only looking at students who are enrolled on 4-1-2024. Uh, the report also opens on that day. You should start to see the data looking accurate and correct on April 1st um, of uh, so next Monday, this report will be due for certification on the 15th of April, which is two Mondays following. That is a holiday. Um, that is the week you, of most people's April vacation. So just kind of be aware that is a um, state holiday as well as a um, vacation week for most school districts. So just kind of keep that in mind. Um, but you have those two weeks and you can start getting the data in right now and it will start loading on Monday. For those who are maybe new to this process, so you have your, this is our general data flow of information. Data usually is entered initially into your local student information system, and then it's required that you do a manual upload or manual entry, or so, sorry, you do an upload into Synergy or you do some manual entry into the student module um, in Synergy to get the data up to the state level. So once it's at the state level, there is an hourly ETL that runs up to NEO. So everything kind of runs in this order. So data that is in NEO has to be edited in Synergy. And if it's not correct in Synergy, you want to look back at your local information, your student information system. So just kind of be aware that this is the progression of how things get up to NEO. Um, if it's missing from state Synergy, it's not going to be reflected in the NEO student data reports. So any changes to a student report needs to be made in Synergy. 
As I stated earlier, this is only going to be looking at enrollments on April 1. So if a student was exited before April 1st, it is going to, they are not going to count as a um, April 1 enrollment count for tuition. So for example, in this example we have here, we have a student that started at the beginning of the year and they're enrolled all the way through May 1 in this first example. That student will count for tuition because they have an enrollment that goes over April 1st. If you have a student that had, so that would be an open enrollment type of situation after April 1. The second student is not going to count because they were exited on 331. That is not a date that overlaps with April 1st. They will not be on the tuition report. They won't be counted in April 1 enrollment. And a, the third example here, a student that starts on 42, so they start next Tuesday, that student is not going to count for enrollment um, either because they don't have that 4-1 enrollment. The last example here shows that a student who starts on Monday, um, if, the, if that's their first day of enrollment, they can be entered, they will count on your tuition report. So only enrollments that are on April 1 are counted for this report. So let's take a look at how to get into the report in NEO. So once you have all the data in Synergy, everything's all set, it's gonna upload into NEO automatically every hour. Um, here's how you can find it. So in NEO, you're going to go to student data, student reports, and then you'll have April enrollment certification. In order to have access to student data, you have to have a um, you have to have an account in NEO. If you do not have an account, your superintendent will need to submit a NEO access request form to the department to the DOE data help desk on your behalf. In order for you to have an account created, you have to have an active staff assignment, which means that someone has to enter you into NEO staff uh, prior to this information. So, or prior to this submission of the access request. Once you have that all squared away, you have your account, you're all ready to go. You're going to be in NEO and you're going to select student data. After student data, you have two options to select student reports, and you can either one of them is going to take you right to the list of student data reports, um, the dashboard here. Alphabetical order in enrollments, these ones are top of the list. So we have April enrollment certification and April enrollment details. Certification is going to be your aggregate counts of information, whereas your April details is going to go into individual students who are counting in those aggregate counts. Taking a look at the certification report, this is what it will look like. Uh, it's going to be a summary of the entire district uh, broken out by your schools. Everyone should be kind of going in and verifying counts. Uh, you can send this to principals to say, what are your counts looking like? Does this look accurate? Is this an accurate reflection? Let's see if we can find any anomalies. Um, that would be all here. If you do find any anomalies, you're going to go into the details report. We'll get into that into a moment. This, um, the difference down here at the bottom, let's get into that a little bit. The difference here is going to be the difference between October and April. So if you have new students that moved in since, um, since October 1, you're going to have an increase. If you have students who have moved out, you would see a decrease. And then any, um, you know, moving in and moving out otherwise. So if you wanted to do a comparison, you could look at your October 1 uh, report and you would be able to see that these students were on that report as opposed to on this report. So you could do a comparison there. But the difference is looking at the students from October 1 to this um, April 1 report. Students exited after October 1 count toward your enrollment from October, but they are not counted for your tuition report. Uh, once all the data is all verified, this is where the superintendent is going to come in and certify the report down at the bottom. You can see it says certify and submit to DOE. They will have the option to push that button and submit it over to us. So if you're taking a look at this data and it doesn't look accurate, you need to do some changes, you need to make some updates, you're not sure why a count is off, then you would be able to link into the details report. The details report is going to tell you more information. It's going to list out all of your students and here's what it looks like. So once you're here, you can organize by attending school. So if you wanted to sort by your school, you could sort by your school um, to see just an elementary school, middle school, however you wanted to sort that out. Um, this is going to give you all the information that you that would be in those aggregate counts on the certification report. 
So let's get into what you can do here. So you can search for a particular student if you want to verify that they're on the, um, the, the report. You can save and export so that you can send this out to your super or to your principals or your um, admin assistants at schools so that they can verify the counts. Uh, you can also sort these by columns so that you can sort by grade, you could sort by foster care, you could sort by your ind indicator of attending count or for tuition. You could sort by any of those. And then you have that indicator of tuition count. So this is going to give you a one if the student is your attending student. Um, if the student is attending elsewhere, this is where those regional programs and special purpose private schools will come into the listing. So you can see here there's one student that's listed with a zero. They are, the, though the responsible district is rainbows and unicorns in this situation, um, they would not count for tuition because they are not attending within that SAU. So the student would be on the attending account for Wonderland in this situation. Um, so these just be kind of aware that, you know, a student will count as a zero if they're not physically attending at your school. This is that's what a tuition count would be looking for. And that's pretty much all we got. So um, just a few notes on this report. Um, update all data in Synergy so that it's up to date, ready to go. Um, and so you can start doing that anytime. You can do that now to start prepping for Monday. Um, just make sure that all your you know, move-ins and your move-outs are all exited or enrolled. Taking care of that can be very helpful. Um, give at least an hour and a half, we usually recommend, for updates to be reflected in the NEO reports. So um, it can take a bit of time for that automatic ETL to run. If you're not, you won't see it immediately because it has to run on those ETLs. Um, so make sure that you are giving it enough time to be reflected. Uh, Synergy to NEO ETL runs hourly from 7 a.m. to 6 p.m. So if you enter any data after 6 p.m., it will not load into NEO until 7 a.m. So just be aware of that if you're kind of working late into the afternoon, which I hope you're not because it's getting to be springtime soon. Hopefully, I know it just snowed, but springtime is coming. So enjoy your time. Um, and get out and enjoy the longer afternoons. But um, if you are working on this after 6 p.m., you should um, expect to see that at, in the 7 a.m. round for um, the NEO reports. You won't see it overnight. And just to reiterate once again, this report is only looking at students enrolled on the date of uh, April 1, 2024. So any students that have an enrollment outside of that time frame will not count on this report. So if you have any questions, please feel free to contact the help desk, or if you want to set up a training, please feel free to reach out to me directly. Um, the website, uh, make sure that you're going to the help desk page for any resources. There's all kinds of stuff there for you. Um, we'll get into some questions. I know I saw some come in, um, so we'll go through some of those. Uh, let's see. So yeah, we did have a question about attendance in here. Um, attendance, when will it start uploading hourly instead of at 6.30 p.m.? Um, currently, we do not have a date for when that's going to change. Um, it's currently staying um, at the 6.30 time frame. So just be aware, um, quarterlies are coming up as well. So they are also due on the 15th. I would recommend getting as many of those quarterly reports done as possible. Um, that would be attendance, uh, daily attendance, truancy, bullying, and behavior. Um, getting those in would be super helpful as well. Um, for economically disadvantaged, uh, if you have any updates to economically disadvantaged, you can put them in um, with the start date that is appropriate for that student. Um, it is not necessary to send out the forms again, um, so you don't need to resend economically disadvantaged forms um, to families. Are there any other questions? We'll give a few moments in case something comes up. So I'm not hearing any or seeing. Oh, we got one.
So this recording, great question. So this recording will be available on the YouTube um, playlist for the Department of Education data team. Um, so if you go to the help desk site, we have a page that has the webinars and the webinars there's at the very top of the page, there's a link over to the YouTube page. Um, so you can link right there from the YouTube, from the webinars page over to the YouTube playlist and it will give you all of them. Um, it does usually take about two days for the communications team to get it rendered and available on the YouTube channel. Um, also, we will be sending the link out um, in, it will be included in the newsletter, which should be going out on Monday. Um, so I'll get the link updated once the YouTube channel, YouTube video is posted. I'll include the link in the newsletter. So if you're not um, reg uh, not um, subscribed to the newsletter, you can subscribe right on the right hand column of the help desk website as well so that you can get that and you can have it right there as well. It's a great question. It's never too, it's never, there's no such thing as a silly question. So thank you for asking that, Megan. All right, with that, um, we will go ahead and close out today's webinar. If anyone has any questions, once again, please feel free to reach out um, and we would be happy to assist you. Um, the report opens on Monday. So give it that amount of time, start to get things ready to go and get those reports in. Mon uh, Monday it will open up and you can get everything done. So we look forward to hearing from you if you have any questions um, and hope that your reporting period goes swimmingly <laughs> without a hitch. That's the goal, right? <laughs> All right, everyone, have a great Tuesday. Looking forward to hearing from you. Enjoy the rest of your day.